uh, as a child I read lots of different things. I didn't read in a directed way. My parents were very free and let us discover literature as we did. We had a house full of books and they always bought us comics. So we always had comics in the house and I remember learning to read because in order to read the comic you have to learn to read to understand. So it started with comics and then I just sort of grew into books and went to the library and had a few books around and then my reading really, really took off as a teenager and I became a very avid reader. As a teenager I read terrible books. I read everything and I slowly found my way to good books. So my parents never said, oh no, don't read that, you know, read this wonderful piece of literature. So I sort of explored and found out and read lots of thrillers and terrible things. But in amongst that, I was reading some quite good books as well. I don't remember ever wanting to become a writer in an active way, but I'm quite an instinctive, unconscious person. And I, when I look back, when I started writing, when I look back at my childhood, it all made sense that I would become a writer. But I never sat down as a child and said, I want to be a writer. Uh, and I think the main reason was that I didn't like writing. I was lazy, so I didn't have a diary. I never kept a diary. I didn't really write many letters. A lot of writers, when they were young, wrote a lot. And they wrote diaries and letters, but I didn't, actually. Yeah, it's always hard to pinpoint moments when you decide to write something. Uh, but I think probably when I was at university, I went to university as a mature student and there was a creative writing course and I followed that and as soon as I started I knew that that was absolutely what I wanted to do and prior to that there had been a couple of occasions when I tried to write something and I remember thinking writing is really difficult it needs skill it needs a craft so I remember that feeling very clearly thinking I need to get myself a proper education and learn a craft yeah the Colour of Milk is set in 19th century England, but I didn't really do any research. I, uh, I think if you do too much research, you can get very research bound, unless it's a well-known historical novel, historical period, and then you need to do the research. But for that, I just sort of imagined myself into it. It was a sort of work of imagination where you just try and work it out. For example, there's no electricity, and you think, well, if I woke up in the night and there's no electricity, how would I see? So it's a quite nice feeling of being a child again, and sort of exploring in your head how it would have been. Yeah, there are some writers who are planners, and they plan and they know what they're doing. And then there are writers like me who have no idea. And I really, really don't know as I'm writing. So in The Colour of Milk, I had no idea what the outcome would be. And I even wrote the first draft, and I still didn't know what the outcome was. So I wrote a draft and then, <gasps> I realised, I had this moment of realisation, so I'm absolutely, I leave a lot to explore and find. And I usually find that the ending and the conclusions are set up within the beginning of a piece of writing. So any problems that you, you have to keep going back to the beginning to find out what that is. It's like driving with no roadmap. You get lost a lot, but you get there in the end. <laughs>